In this video, I'd like to take our parents and students on a tour of our assignment center and uh, just kind of show you a little bit of the functionality. Uh, assignments are a critical function of our on-campus learning management system that allow our teachers to assign and measure uh, student comprehension through various types of work that can be assigned there. Uh, the Assignment Center is the central location where uh, faculty, parents, and students go to utilize this uh, functionality of assignments. So every assignment and on campus is made up of three parts. It's made up of the instruction for the assignment, the digital resources that are required in connection with the assignment, and then possibly a submission method or the ability to change the status um, of the assignment. Um, there are different types of assignments. There's your basic assignment, your assessment, and then discussion, which we'll cover all three of those in this video. Some assignments require uh, file submissions uh, to complete those assignments. Um, and so there are three methods for submitting work on an assignment. The first is an on-campus file submission. Uh, the second would be a Google assignment submission, and the third would be a, a third-party digital tool submission, and we'll go over all three of those in this video. Uh, let's go ahead and get into our assignment center. Now, if I'm logged in as uh, one of our students on one of our Chrome OS devices, uh, I should be able to go up to this uh, folder up here, Calvary Day School, and then click on On Campus. Um, if I am a parent at home and I want to access uh, this information, uh, I can log into Google Chrome uh, as the student and um, then I would be able to see this folder up here. We have another great uh, video on how to do that that I'll, I'll put in the comments below. Um, but to access on campus, I'm just going to click on on campus. Now, if I'm a parent, um, when I log in, I'm going to see things a little bit different than than the students are. And so I'm going to show you both um, views today. Um, so I'm going to actually log into my parent access first. And uh, I am uh, have two boys at the school, and so I can come in here under my parent persona. And in order to see the assignments for my students, what I'm going to do is come up to my children here, and then I'm going to click on my son Cameron. And then I'm going to click on his Assignments tab. So when I'm in the assignments as a parent, again, my view is a little bit different than the student's view. The student's view is much more functional for them, and um, it allows them to uh, take some of the assessments and things I'm going to show you in just a minute. But I wanted to kind of just give you a quick view into the parent view so that you can kind of see some of the differences. Um, some of the similarities between the two views is, is the navigation. So up here at the top, I'm able to see uh, the work that's been assigned to them this week, or if I choose, I can filter by day, um, of course, by week or by month. I can also filter by assigned, um, like when I can filter to, to assignments that were assigned to a certain day or in a, within a certain week, and then also assignments that are due on, uh, on a certain day or within a certain time frame. Um, for the most part, if you leave this clicked as active, you'll see the assignments that are actively uh, to be worked on that particular day or within the time frame that you specify. Um, to go back to a previous week, I can use these arrows uh, on the left here. I can click back and it takes me back to the, the previous week or click forward and go to the, the week coming up. Over on the right here, I've got my grid view, so I can change this to a, uh, a grid view instead of a list view that kind of gives me all of the assignments by day. Um, I also have the ability to export this out to a calendar. So if I want these assignments to appear on a, uh, an outside calendar, maybe a Google calendar, I can use uh, the RSS feed uh, information here to export that data to a calendar. And then I've got some print functionality as well. Now, the big difference here for parents is that you don't necessarily see the ability to take or to change the status of an assignment. Um, you can click into these assignments and you can see the instructions and things, and we'll talk about the um, pieces of an assignment in just a second. Um, but you're not really able to, to take the assignments or submit any work um, from the parent view. In order to do that, you've got to go into the student view. So I'm actually going to pull up Cameron's student view and I'm going to go into on campus and we're going to look at the assignments and kind of break them down a little bit. 
So inside of on campus, uh, the first thing that the student sees when they log in is the assignment center. We've got it set up so that they go directly to that assignment center. Um, it is um, set to automatically go to the week's assignments, um, but they can easily just click on that navigation bar and filter out to just today's assignments. And as you can see, um, all of these assignments um, were assigned to uh, Cameron today. Um, he's got all of his different classes, uh, the type of assignment, the details, the sign date, the due date, the status of the, the assignment, which he has control over. So uh, in, in most cases, if it's just an assignment that uh, something that he's been uh, asked to do, uh, and not necessarily an assessment, and I'll talk about the difference between those in just a second, then he can come over here and click on this change status option and then select whether he wants to make that uh, assignment in progress, uh, completed, or he can just leave it as to do. Um, and so that kind of helps the student. It gives them a little bit of an agenda page, if you will, um, that helps them to kind of navigate through this. So let's talk about assignments um, specifically. <clears throat> one of the one of the things that um, that Cameron has the ability to do as a student, and that students have uh, the ability to do, is they can actually add tasks to this. So uh, this can become uh, a a to do list for them. So if they had something uh, that they needed to complete that maybe wasn't on their assignment list, they can actually click this button and add just a general task for themselves. Uh, so it kind of helps them to. Uh, again, keep track of the things that they need to do and um, be able to um, show that they've been completed. Um, they can also filter by status. So if uh, Cameron wanted to come in here and say, I just want to see um, everything that um, maybe is completed today or maybe in progress, we'll just check that and hit apply. So he's got two assignments that he's put in progress that he's working on. And these assignments are not due uh, until the 24th of April. So he's got plenty of time. And so, but he wanted to note in there that he is working on them. And that kind of shows that, uh, that that's going on. In addition to that, um, you can also select uh, filter by classes. So this gives the student the ability to filter down to a specific subject or a specific class. <clears throat> so Cameron can come in here, clear all of this, and just choose his math. And so now he sees, okay, well, this is what I've got to do today in math. Um, so that gives him a lot of uh, flexibility as from the student perspective and the student view to be able to organize this and be able to see it and, and accomplish things in an organized fashion. Um, so let's talk a little bit about assignments and to do this I'm actually going to jump into next week and um, I'm going to filter this down to a class that Cameron isn't really taking. It's actually one that I've created, um, but it kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of show you a little bit about each of the different um, assignment types and things you might encounter in on campus. Uh, so first of all, we want to look at the assignment itself. Um, and so an assignment has really three parts. Um, the first part that you'll see in each of the assignments is the instructions. So for instance, in this first assignment here, uh, what is Instagram? Um, visit the link below and read about Instagram. So that's the instruction for the student. That's what the student needs to do. Um, there is the second part of an assignment would be um, the digital resources. Now, not all assignments have digital resources, but any assignment um, that is requiring the student to go someplace on the internet or go to a topic or go to other information or additional information that they need to study, that is going to be linked to in the assignment detail. So in this case, the instruction is to visit the link below and read about Instagram. So, so every assignment should have instructions, um, and, and that will be a part of every uh, digital assignment you see in on campus. Um, whether or not the assignment has digital resources will depend on uh, the teacher and the assignment. Uh, sometimes the instruction may be to read pages in a book uh, or in a textbook, um, and then uh, that you know would, wouldn't necessarily have a digital uh, a resource along with it. And the third thing that assignment may have is the uh, submission method or the ability to update the status. So if I come back here in this particular assignment, there's no, there's nothing to be submitted, um, but I can come out once I've completed the assignment and I can change the status to completed. And that just helps the student to know, okay, I'm done with that project. I can move on to other assignments in my list. So let's look real quick at a, um, assignment that has a submission method. So in this case, this getting started with Instagram assignment, 
you'll notice um, that it has a the available action is to submit um, and so in this case there's something to be submitted so I can jump in here into the assignment again I should always have my instructions available to me uh, using the video on the Instagram topic page create a short video on how to get started with Instagram and submit it here so here I can see that I've got a topic page that has more information so using that video so I can click on that that's going to take me over to my uh, topic that I created on Instagram within my class there's a video on here on getting started with Instagram so I can actually watch that and then I'm instructed to create a short video and upload that uh, as my uh, work for this assignment so if I had completed the assignment I made my video all I have to do is come and click the attach files link click on the option to upload a file I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab a file here and upload it it would be a, a video file or whatever the teacher asked for in this case and then just click attach that's going to attach that file and then I can add some additional comments or um, maybe uh, some information that I want the teacher to know about my um, my submission and then I can submit that assignment now you also notice that there is a save for later button so maybe I'm not quite ready to do that I can use that um, but I'm gonna go ahead and submit this assignment so you can see what happens are you sure you're ready to submit yes I am now until the due date uh, the student should be able to come in and resubmit that so if they decided eh, I don't really like that I'm gonna do it a little bit differently um, they can come in and click resubmit go through the whole submission process again and um, and that would uh, change that file out as long as it's before the the um, the due date actually in this case the 9th of April is when this one is due and so that's how you do a uh, an online submission with on campus and you'll notice that once the submission is done uh, that the assignment is marked complete and that helps the students know again that it's um, it's done uh, you'll also notice here since I'm on the week of April 5th through 11th that these two assignments are upcoming in other words they haven't been assigned to me yet right now they're an upcoming assignment um, so that is the, um, the the submission. Now there's several other types of submissions that you can make with uh, an assessment that your student may encounter. Uh, so I've already shown you the file submission with on campus. There's also a Google assignment submission and you'll notice here this Instagram tips for parents assignment has a Google assignment attached to it. So I'm going to click on that real quick and my instructions again every assignment is going to have instructions for the student to complete as well as any digital resources that uh, the student may need to complete that assignment. Uh, submit a Google document with a three paragraph description of the tips for parents provided on the Instagram help site. So I could go back and look at the Instagram help site and when I'm ready to submit my my document I can come here to where uh, the Google assignment is I can click launch that's going to launch me into the Google course kit um, and it's going to allow me then to either create or submit a Google document um, for grading and so here you see this is the assignment I can come down here I can click on add files so if I've already created my document in my Google Drive and I'm just wanting to submit that I can submit that by hitting add files or if I haven't even started yet I can hit create and say okay I want to start a new document and what that's going to do is that's going to create a brand new Google document uh, you'll notice that when I clicked on the create button it also has the ability to create uh, a Google sheet or a Google slideshow so whatever the teacher may be asking for um, as a, um, a submission you can be able to create it right here and then I can click on that and it'll actually open that document <clears throat> and then here I can actually come in and put in my paragraphs um, and then once I'm complete, once I've completed this document, I can come back to um, the Instagram tips for parents and I can hit submit. It's going to ask me if I want to submit that document. I say yes, submit. Once the student has submitted the assignment, then um, if they click on the launch uh, button again, they get uh, this information. You're all set. Your assignment's been submitted. Now they can unsubmit the assignment work on it and then resubmit it up into the due date um, and so that's a, an important feature as well. 
Now back in on campus, um, one thing about Google Assignments is that it doesn't necessarily mark the assignment as completed um, because the teacher hasn't actually looked at the assignment or graded the assignment, but the student still has the ability to come in here and mark this as completed. So at least on their to-do list, um, they're seeing that that assignment has been completed and uh, it helps them again with their organization. Uh, now, the third type of submission that may be asked for um, from a, an on-campus assignment would be maybe a submission from another digital tool, maybe a tool like Nearpod um, or, or some other um, third-party tool that we use. Uh, and the, here's an example of that. Here is a, a classwork assignment for a Nearpod. Um, and so the assignment is to complete the Instagram lesson in Nearpod. And so the student has a link here to click right into that lesson. Uh, they're able to, to click in and then um, they can begin. Now this might be any number of different resources. We use uh, a lot of different third-party uh, technology tools. Anytime that a teacher has a lesson, uh, that requires the student to access a third party. They'll have a link in the assignment and that link will take them to that third party lesson uh, that they need to complete. In this case, Cameron would complete the Instagram Nearpod lesson. And by doing so, um, it actually will um, notify uh, the teacher once he's completed the, the Nearpod lesson or whatever the third party tool lesson that he has to do. The teacher will be notified that that lesson's complete and then they'll be responsible for going back and putting in the grade. For the student, once they've completed the lesson, again, um, since there's no communication between that third party tool and on campus, they can come in here and just simply mark that as completed. So in addition to assignments, which everything that I've showed you thus far is uh, some type of an assignment, there are also assessments that can be taken through on campus. An assessment is an online uh, quiz or test that the student can actually complete right within uh, on campus. And you'll notice down here that I have an Instagram review test or assessment. With assessments, there's not any information that's stored uh, by clicking on the title. What you do with an assessment is simply click the take button and that will take you into the assessment itself. Um, some assessments do have time frames, um, so you'll, you'll have a certain amount of time that you have to complete. Uh, I definitely recommend when you start an assessment um, to, to complete it um, in one sitting. Don't leave your computer unattended for any period of time. Um, it might kick you out or uh, the computer might go to sleep. Um, sometimes you can retake an assessment depending on the settings the teacher has uh, set for that assessment or you may be able to save it for later um, and continue to work on it uh, for a period of time. So in this case, um, my Instagram review, I just hit the begin button and, um, and here are my uh, different um, questions. So I've got a fill in the blank question. Instagram is a free uh, photo uh, and video sharing app. Uh, Instagram is available on which of these platforms? I can click all of the above. So that's a multiple choice. I have a true or false. And then I have an open uh, question, that uh, essay type question, where I have to type in information. Now I can save this for later in this case because uh, I have that turned on for this assessment. Some assessments won't have that option uh, or I can submit my answers. When I submit, it asks me to confirm. And then on this particular assessment, you'll notice I have a retake option. So I can uh, choose to retake it if I want. Um, but I'm seeing that it's completed, but I don't know what I did, how I did on it. That'll come later as the teacher uh, grades that assignment, and then I'll be able to see uh, what my grade was on that. Now, there's one other type of uh, assignment um, that you might see in your assignment center. You've got assignments, you've got assessments, um, but you also have discussions. And here is a discussion um, assignment here. I can click into that. And usually these discussion assignments will be just that. Uh, the teacher will pose a question and then you just add your response by clicking on that. And you can type in your response here. You can add attachments or embed objects um, depending on this again the settings that the teacher has set for that discussion uh, and then you just post your response as you begin posting responses you'll actually get to see other students responses and um, and so that is a, a tool sometimes the teacher uses to uh, just engage the students in conversation and again once that's done it's marked as complete
So the assignment center really becomes a place where students are able to manage uh, all of their assignments, uh, to see the instruction that the teacher has for each of the assignments, to link to the digital resources that are required of them as they take the assignments, and then also to submit their work um, as needed with uh, the assignment, depending on what the, the teacher has specified. So hopefully this has helped to explain this critical functionality of on-campus and the use of our assignments and the Assignment Center.